This time, my topic is quite different from your topic. Oh, really? Nevertheless, you've talked a bit about a piece of it because, <laughs> of course, you would have to be living on the moon not to have heard that Xylem and Evoqua might very soon come together. I mean, if everything goes through by mid 2023, they will come together. That's not the topic of my top three, but it made me realize something, which is that the water industry mm -hmm. is kind of a weird animal when it comes to its finances. There was an article made by Global Water Intelligence who was listing a bit the involvement of venture capital. And they do that everywhere where they sum up everything which venture capital has been doing that year within the water industry. And every year they draw somewhat the same conclusion, which is not much interest from the venture capital. But it's an injustice it is. And um, we're a bit shocked because the other sectors are getting so much money, they get showered with money. They're big and I'm little, but it's an injustice it is. Some trillions and we get some hundreds of millions. Don't get me wrong, I would be very happy to get the hundreds of millions. I like money. But it is true that if you compare it with other scenes, it is low. Now the question is, why so? Because low level of venture capital is, when you think of it, absolutely logical. But hasn't it increased over the last years? A lot. Yeah, when you start from pretty low, you can only sure. increase. Hi, Editor Antoine interrupting again to bring a bit of nuance and data into these investment trends. 2022 has seen $650 million of venture investment in water against $470 million in 2021 and $325 million in 2020, according to GWI. In the meantime, global venture investments has been over a roller coaster with $345 billion in 2020 681 billion in 2021 and 445 billion in 2022. So indeed, venture investment in water grows relatively as it went from 0.09% of all venture investments to 0.14%. But still, we're talking of one out of 1,000 venture dollars which goes to water back to life. But actually, it makes sense that venture capital doesn't get that much interest in water because, as you know, we don't have an existing water unicorn. We had half unicorns. Half unicorns, come on, we discussed <laughs> yeah, that. But not a real unicorn. So after all that introduction, where do I head with my top three? Actually, I found out that there is nevertheless still some finance people who seem to be making good money within the water space. And I found that out when I looked hmm. at the capital of Xylem and the capital of Evoqua because I just noticed that they were big things in common. BlackRock, the Vanguard Group, they were holding 10% of each company. I'm like, interesting. I haven't noticed personally. I'm not a finance guy. I'm a layman. I'm a muggle. Don't scream behind your screen by saying, oh, we all knew that. I know you knew, but I didn't. You probably knew because you're the guy who reads the report. But I just realized that those big funds are invested in our industry. And the reason why I make all that introduction is actually you'll see that the top three itself is very short. So what I try to understand is what are they investing in and how are they doing that? And actually, when you look at it, both Vanguard and BlackRock, what they do is that they build an ETF. If you want to invest in water, but you don't want to choose one specific share and you're not sure what would be the right fit, you invest in the ETF do and you? they do that do for you. you. Do, do you? I don't. I, I have. Don't. I have one. Okay. In I, what do you invest? In, in, I don't know which. Is it, is it an European ETF which invests in the 20 biggest, or let's say the picture of the 20 biggest water companies since one and a half years, debt minus. <laughs> That's the other point. It's <laughs> when you look at both Nasdaq, Dow Jones, and all the big European places, they have the water indexes. So where they put the water companies and you can see that index. Sure. And those index go down. I mean, if you invest your money in your water index, the saying is that on the long run, water scarcity is going to be on the rise, more people. Exist. So it will make money, but today it's losing money, which is also the reason why why would you invest in water if you're just losing money? And these ETFs do better than the market, but still on the 10 years time, they're making some money, but on the one and a half year time you were just mentioning, they are losing money. What I can say from my experience is that, uh, let's say they haven't really recovered after after the COVID thing. During COVID, everything went down dramatically, right? And the DAX, the German Pendant, the NASDAQ, even the Dow came up even over the last six months, right? But the ETF for the water industry is still in red, especially for me. So actually, my top three, and then I'd like to discuss that with you, is about, let's play it as a quiz. I called it the shareholders darling. So if you are one of these ETF or one of these investment funds, and you're looking into investing in water companies, what are the ones you invest in, the three most invested, and which would hence also get the highest ratio between their actual valorization and their 
real revenues. So what would be number three? What's, well, the, what's the biggest company in the world? Beoria, clear? No, it is, it is. In terms of, of revenue? In terms of revenue, I think so, yes. Yeah, and Veolia is by far not the highest valorized company by the financial markets. And that came in as a surprise because Veolia was number one, both the number two. You could expect that even though maybe the P&E ratio is not that high, they still would be the highest valorization, but they are not. Yeah, well, what I have realized is that the most companies uh, my ATF is, is into are American ones. And some, they have just a side business. I mean, Gabarit, for instance, good example, Gabarit. We all know Gabarit for our toilets, most of us. Swiss company. It's a Swiss company, it's a European company, but they have just a minor section really, from my perspective, for the water industry. But they belong to the water industry from the financial perspective. Yes. The same that, that was for that, my that, company. I mean, I, I belong to GF Piping Systems, but GF Piping Systems is one of the three divisions of Georg Fischer AG. The other divisions are automotive, so casting, casting solutions and, uh, and machining solutions. Yeah. And within piping systems, all we do doesn't belong to water, a good portion of it, but not everything. Yeah. Nevertheless, BlackRock has us in their ETF. Vanguard has the, I mean, we are in all these ETFs and with a good share, just because we are listed as a water company. So you're right, that's the first discrepancy. But even among the water companies, Companies. There's, I would say, a subset of what are companies which are sexy or sexier, which you see in all the ETFs. There are various ETFs, but they all have those companies in common. My number three would be Danaher, exactly. which you see everywhere. everywhere. And then the two next ones, so my number two and my number one, are actually the two biggest valorizations there is out there in the market. What is that? It's American Waterworks. So it's a yep. utility, yep. private, yep. I mean, but it's a utility. And that's also the best investment you could have made because when they went public, they went public at 17 or $18. And nowadays they are trading at $150 per share. So I, I did the calculation. I think you have a compound annual growth rate if you stay invested in them of about 10% kind of an incredible return, knowing that what they do is being a water utility. So really shows you which part of the industry is sexy. Mm -hmm. And number one, a bit more easy, I guess. Which one? Ecolab. Arguably, as you said, Ecolab doesn't do only water, does a bit more water than Gabarit would, but still, True. that is by far, when you look at the valuation, the sexiest water company. Ecolab, as we are recording that, it might be evolving because, you know, uh, everything moves in that world, but they are valorized around 40 billion. When they are, now that Xylem and Evoqua come together, arguably only the, the third company in the world. So they are valued at double Veolia when they do in terms of water revenue, maybe twice less or three times less than, mm -hmm. than the new Veolia. So it shows that what financials, when they look at our sector, what they see is if you operate, you're in a very good position because that is a steady business. We'll never get disrupted. Prices go up, not to the extent they should maybe, but they go up and you can win more business by having new people connecting to the same network. So you're leveraging your network and nobody asks you to maintain your network so you can still okay, live on that. And uh, the other thing is this Ecolab, which is like but, technology but companies another, or chemical companies. Another company you can find on each and every list for the biggest ETF is uh, Pi. Not that much. I didn't find, they're not in BlackRock. They are not in- They're in, not in BlackRock, that doesn't mean, but, I'm, 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 but the European ones, the European ETFs, they have listed Pal. So now I was wondering why Pal, and it turned out, I mean, Pal is a bigger company than we here with our European glasses on, see that. They have a huge portion for, for the water industry with some membranes, clearly. And they have a huge business over there in the US. So they are bigger than sometimes me. I'm, I'm here also the, the layman and the muggle. But for me, Pal was a membrane supplier. Maybe they have also small containers, but they are bigger than, than we all think. That was a really surprise for me that I looked into the ATF and I found, okay, that's Paul. But back to the top three, what is your point? My point is there are several discrepancies. The first discrepancy is we are expecting venture money and I don't get why we should expect venture money. That's not going to happen. So I think we should stop complaining about venture doesn't invest in us. Yes, venture will not invest in us and that's it. The second thing is <laughs> we are looking into the water revenue and we do believe that if we have a high water revenue, we would be forward looking. Well, it sounds like not so much. You so, have to be in the right section of the water revenue. I, and the third is like, if you want to be forward looking in that sector, look at two very specific subsets of the industry, which is operation of the utilities, because there is a real need there. Mm. 
and mm. the technology element. Don't be an EPC. That's that's a I, shitty position. I have, I have just a question. I mean, if you say we, we don't get venture capital, for instance, what would be your advice to a company who wants to go to the market, a startup? Take an example, two years back, 374 went to IPO. They came to the market. NX Filtration went to IPO. What would be your, your advice if you say, well, venture capital is not that what you get? I think hyper growth, and it's something which I have frantically asked to my podcast guest for a while. It was one of the questions I was bringing up all the time because I wanted to get to wrap my head around it. Is hypergrowth something possible or even desirable in the water industry? Nobody ever said yes. Different reasons, but nobody ever said that hypergrowth was possible or would be desirable. So it sounds like there is a consensus from the food industry that hypergrowth is not possible. And venture is the vehicle for hypergrowth. So if we say hypergrowth is not possible, we cannot on the same hand say, Oh, and venture doesn't invest in us. Yeah, it makes a, a ton of sense. If you're a specific subset of this industry, if you're atmospheric water generation, Big, biggest investment 2022, then maybe assuming you can back your claims, which is at some point uh, water is going to be almost free and doesn't require a network, then that has hyper growth potential. But if not, I will have to come back to the study. It's been a while. I haven't name dropped it, so I have to. Paul Callahan's study of the dynamics of water innovation. It takes, it takes, it takes 16 to 25 years if you're successful to be in the middle of the market. That's not hyper growth. And it's not a problem. It's just that we've been raised with this idea that success is being Twitter or Uber, or maybe not Twitter anymore, but Uber. <laughs> but we have more and more companies coming to the market, which coming with the platform. I'm thinking, for instance, about Kendo. They have a kind of platform. They are coming with a kind of SaaS solution. Mm -hmm. We have other companies, Clear, for instance. You know, Clear because they were guests on your podcast as well. We discussed that. Would you say that applies for them as well? Was a Paul O'Callaghan study? Or the, Absolutely. Is, is a Paul O'Callaghan study more on his technology, for instance, uh, if you would have Zweet membranes, generation second, whatever, right? <laughs> that you are saying, well, if I have a technology, it takes 10 to 15 years to, to mature. You, But, you, you're right. Paul's study, and by the way, Paul, I want a royalty because the book is out. Go get the book. It's really interesting. And I don't get a cent on the book. But still, Paul's study is really on the hardware side of it. So you're right. So, Nevertheless, even if you're a platform, be it Clear, Kendo, Catium, all the different platforms which are building up, there's maybe one more uh, accelerating scale factor because you're digital, you can do everything as a service. Yes, that's right. But still, you have to deal with the vertical you're in. If you are Kendo, you are dealing with wastewater networks. True. It's hard to disrupt wastewater networks. Oh, but that's what they try, right? To, and to, not, not the, no, not the, not the network, not sure. how, how, you mo how do you monitor, how you, how you, how you, how you That's my point. I'm not sure the they try to disrupt it. And I think they're right not to try to disrupt it. They try to make it better and to, to build a steady, sustainable growth. And our sector caters for steady, sustainable growth. Hence, to go back to my top three, American Waterworks, that company exists for two centuries. It's a steady, sustainable growth. Ecolab, yeah. that company is yeah, not but, but, anything new and not anything incredibly fancy. But it started from, from zero and have, have merged with multiple other yes. companies over the time. Yes. And that's why they are that big. Right? And even they, they have just a small portion for the water industry. What I'm saying is that you have different growth model. If you take the, the venture startup growth model, it means first year you multiply by three, second year you multiply by three, third year you multiply by two, fourth year you multiply by two. That's crazy growth. 300%, 300%, 200%, 200 When you have a very successful company in the water industry, it's going to make maybe double up the first year and 30%. Then another 30%, and then a steady 20%. And that is incredible in that sector because it is above what any of the other companies are um, doing. So, if I understand you right, that, that's why you're saying we are not sexy enough because our increase is just 20%, 30%, whatever, and not double up this year, double up next year. It's not a matter of trip. sexy enough. It's a matter, I mean, sexy for, for we're investors. We're not sexy for venture yeah. because venture is taking a big risk and is giving you loads of money when you are hardly able to receive it because you're really in, in your baby steps and you might die and they don't care because they invest in 20 companies. I certainly care about losing some millions, but not that much because one of the companies is going to recover that. Do that in the water industry, you will never recover it because none of these companies are going to have a boom, explosive growth. But, but, but we are sexy for the black rocks of this world, which have to look to something which guarantees their yields over 10, 20 years, which is never going to crash because agriculture will still need water, industry will still need water, and people will still need water. So it's steady, it's reliable, it's one of the layers of this investment cake. And we have to be, I guess, honest with ourselves 
about the place we have in that in investment cake. What do you say to, 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 to investment companies, for instance, like XPB? They just invest in water companies. So mm -hmm. if I understand you right, on the one hand, you're saying, well, don't expect to be to have the next unicorn. You will have maybe a stable growth, maybe, maybe not, whatever, but it will not grow that fast. Do they have the same expectation or do they have an expectation? I mean, think about it. I mean, we had Envirocomy, Skion, right? Skion is also similar like that. They have an expectation. So you are saying that they don't have an expectation. I'm not saying they don't have an expectation. No, no, no. You... As, as, there, there was, the, yeah. the, the sentence was not ready. As, for instance, BlackRock. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying it's, it's what you're naming now with XPV or with Skion are, again, another layer which fits as well to the industry. Remember, we had that conversation, I think, off the record with Reinhardt when we were done at the IFAT. I think you asked him what uh, Skion was in for for the long term. We are inside a Skion company, so I guess I can speak about it. And I'm not saying anything too touchy. He yeah. said clearly they are in that game for the long run, they want to build fast because they want to, to reach that scale. And, but and, and, it is. But, but it is it, the dissonor, di different approach. I mean, this is ski on ski on family. They are more family owned, and that's why they really want to play the okay, really XPV. long game. XPV, XPV, they are not for the long game. Okay, XPV. XPV is a bit to a different scale. What uh, John Robinson was telling me from Mazarin, which is he looks at an exit within six to seven years. Exactly. But an exit to someone who will take to the next step and to the next step and to the next step. And for those people, the interesting thing is another section of Paul O'Callaghan's study, which is looking at the survival rates of the water companies. The water companies don't die. Here we are. They might be living in Valhalla and in a limbo place where you don't want to be, exactly. but they don't die. Meaning that in the worst case scenario, the money you've invested in is going to be worth a bit less, but it's not going to be going to zero. No, some, when, someone will come and will acquire you and you're part of a group, yeah. even if you don't have any money and you don't get any money and then they will sell you to the next and then if, you will disappear. If I want to be slowly. Bitchy, let's look at your previous company. I go and say how can Elsa say yes? Okay. Hande, how Hande, often, sorry. How, uh, yeah, because they had to change the name because they went bankrupt and to, then they to, came to, back. 2014 and okay. then they came back with uh, SH&E. Before that, it was Hagen Elsa say yes. How often did they die? Because at some point, they were we were part of the same company. Yes, but let's say before that, I don't know. But let's say there were a couple of critical situations, things like that. And yeah. A water company doesn't die. A water company goes to a phase where they struggle with cash or they struggle with the project. That's a good news, right? So that means yeah. if, if you build up a water company, you will never die. That's what he's saying. But, but I, I'm not saying I envy you because if you're in that phase where you're always struggling for cash and you're going from pilot to pilot, I mean, it's what many call death by piloting and it's not much better. Crossing the Shadham. Yeah. Crossing the Shadham. That is a, the, the biggest the biggest issue. Final question, why are you not investing in ETFs? Do you don't believe in the water industry? <laughs> I'm not investing in ETF because I, I have three kids I've bought me, a host, me too, me too. Uh, and I simply don't even get how you get to one additional euro at the end of the month, which you can invest in anything. Okay, I, I, will, I, give you, I will give you some investment, I will need some after, investment after advice. Show. So that show is not investment advice, so don't come to us and say, but for sure, on top of the show not being investment advice, don't come to me for personal finances. I'm the worst with that, because the reason why I can look at you here, 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 and, and probably even there, it's because I love cameras. So whenever I have one euro, I'm investing in a camera. So. Which which is true, by the way. <laughs> so you see, I'm not speaking for myself, but I'm speaking for... You know, the reason why, I, I, I think it was three years back, three years back and I was thinking, you know, my company and I have a goal that I want to invest part of the money into into, into to help for, for the water industry. And the other thing I was thinking to myself, I have to prove I am part of the water industry. That means I have to invest. I have to give some money into that game. And I just was looking for ETFs. So I believe in the industry and that's why I invested in that. I'm not like you. I would definitely believe if I had money that I have. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe I should start my own company. You should. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> Anyways, I think that was it for my top three for, for this month. I'd be very curious if you're looking into of the type of vehicles, if you have an informed opinion on this investment sphere, I'm going to read and, and have a look at all your comments because I think there's a lot of value to extract there. But that